and begin to glorify this great God who is awesome all by himself we worship you all the glory belongs to God all the honor belongs to him there is none like our God from the ends of the earth he is worthy to be praised Father we thank you we lift you high the most high God the immaculate God you are so loved you are so gracious you are so faithful in our faithfulness lord give us the grace to remain faithful to you to remain faithful to you lord we love you thank you jesus hallelujah thank you father we give you praise and honor hallelujah praise the lord 
I want to welcome you to this broadcast this evening. It's such a pleasure to be able to come before you every week with God's word. And I am so grateful for the privilege. I want to thank God for as many people who are tuning in at this time. It is such a, an honor. Welcome to this broadcast by Dominion City, Dublin. And today, I trust that as we share God's word and as we meditate on God's word and as we pray, that the Spirit of God will pass across the message to you in clear terms and will illuminate your heart. The Bible says in Ephesians 3.17, that the God of our Lord Jesus will grant unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him that the eyes of your understanding may be enlightened and that you may know what is the hope of your calling and the riches of the glorious inheritance in the saints Today, I pray that as you listen to God's word and as it illuminates your heart, that you will understand what treasure it is that God has bestowed for you and I in the name of Jesus. God bless you. I want to thank God for our broadcast last week. Um, it was the first broadcast for 2020. And I want to bless God for the message that he helped us deliver on that day. And last week, we talked about the the very wonderful subject and that being the the fact that christ has given us a secret as believers and that secret is that he is in us christ is in you and he says that the the, the key to christian maturity is understanding that it is christ nothing more nothing less Christ is everything we need. Christ in you is the software you need to be able to activate a network of impossibilities that dwells in Christ, that dwells in God, to be able to have access to the vast resources of the kingdom. Christ in you. Scripture says that Christ in me is the hope of glory. Christ in you is the hope of glory. Christ in you is the hope of glory. And that hope is so, so illuminating to the hearts that if you understand it, like we said, it's like having access to Facebook network just by downloading the app. You don't need to buy the big machines or the network devices that they use. All you need is the app on your phone and you have access to anyone's Facebook profile. That's how it is. Christ in you gives you access to the impeccable resource of wealth and of of growth and of and of of glory that resides in God. Hallelujah, Hallelujah. And today I want to talk and let to share with us about a spirit-filled life, a spirit-filled life, spirit-filled life. Over the days, the Lord has been bringing this to my heart. You see, um, the life is a gift, and every single day is a gift. Just as we read last week, Scripture says that it is that singular knowledge that I fight towards day after day, month after month, year after year. Christ, nothing more, nothing less. And how do you sustain such a relationship with Christ? A daily communication, a daily network with God. How do you sustain that? That's what I've come to share with us today. Because when we say that, if you can maintain that relationship with God every single day, you end up having a successful year, you end up having a successful month, and thereon, you end up having a successful you know, life by just making communi constant contact with, uh, uh, with Christ every day. How does that reflect in a daily life? How does that because i mean it's like saying every single day do one thing how do you maintain such levels it's like a water in a cup every single day you come and pour more and it overflows sometimes it goes down the, the level of the water drops and you have to fill again sometimes it, it remains at the top but you still have to keep filling it you know the only way that you can sustain a 
constant Christian faith is by a spirit-filled life. The Bible says that Jesus said, I am going, but I will send you a comforter. He will teach you, he says, he will bring to your remembrance all things that I have taught you. As human beings, we are we have a tendency to forget the the most important thing sometimes. We have a tendency to to forget the promises. We have a tendency to forget the love that Christ has shown us. There is a high tendency that sometimes we sleep off of the faithfulness of God. We sleep out of the hands of His mercy. But the spiritual life sustains God's presence in your life. The spiritual life sustains God's presence, God's presence in your life. And I will read uh, uh, pa- the the uh, the the passage for which we would be looking at today a spirit filled life a spirit filled life that's what we're talking about and if you look at scriptures in Galatians chapter 5 from verse 19 it says it is obvious what kind of life develops out of trying to get your own way all the time what kind of life is that? Repetitive, loveless, cheap sex. This is the message translation. A stinking accumulation of mental and emotional garbage. Frenzied and joyless grabs for happiness. Trinket gods. Magic show religion. Paranoid loneliness. Cutthroat competition all consuming yet never satisfied wants a brutal temper an impotence to love or be loved divided homes and divided lives small-minded and lopsided pursuits the vicious habit of depersonalizing everyone into a rival uncontrolled and uncontrollable addictions ugly parodies of community i could go on this isn't the first time i have warned you you know if you use your freedom this way you will not inherit god's kingdom Hmm. and then it goes on to say but what happens when we leave god's way i can go on to look at the first section of this verse and talk about how the many other ways you can live trying to get your own way but let's focus on what you know is a better way to live God's way he says he brings gifts into our lives much the same way that fruit appears in an orchard things like affection for others exuberance about life serenity We develop a willingness to stick with things, a sense of compassion in the heart, and a conviction that a basic holiness permeates things and people. We find ourselves involved in loyal commitments, not needing to force our way in life, able to marshal and direct our energies wisely. (laughs) Wonderful. Come again. But what happens when we live God's way? He brings gifts into our lives much the same way that fruit appears in an orchard. And what are these gifts? Things like affection for others, exuberance about life, serenity. We develop a willingness to stick with things, a sense of compassion in the heart, and a conviction that a basic holiness permeates things and people we find ourselves involved in loyal commitments not needing to force our way in life able to marshal and direct our energies wisely praise the lord so this is a good comparison between a self-lived life and a spirit-filled life this is the the passage that talks about the fruit of the spirit in galatians chapter 5 And recently I got to learn through my devotional that the fruit 
The scripture calls it the fruit of the Spirit, not the fruits of the Spirit. They are not nine fruits. It's one fruit, but in nine parts. So it's one life by the Spirit of God that is lived in nine ways. And we see those nine ways from verse 22 to 23. That has, just like fruits bearing every day, it has affection for others. These things come out of this life every day. There's serenity, there's exuberance about life. You know, there's willingness to stick with things, there's devotion, there's commitment, there's love for others, you know. So these things come out of this life. Exuberance means, you know, being full of energy, being excited about life. There's excitement about life. There can be depression in a life that is lived with by the Spirit. There can be, you know, uh, uh, a lack of peace so serenity has to do with you know absolute calmness absolute calmness has to do with you know the quietness of the heart and these things scripture says are things that are evident in a life that is spirit filled in a life that is spirit filled the state of being calm you know there's loyal commitment there's consistency there's peace we are not marshaled with our energy. We are not trying to live life by our strength. The Bible says, by strength shall no man prevail. So, if you want to prevail by your power in doing the things that you should do to please God, in achieving in life, or in moving on with life, you cannot do it on your own. There is a higher path. It is a spirit-filled life. A life with constant communion with the Holy Spirit. The Bible says that the Spirit of God searches the inward part of our spirit, and that 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 part of our spirit is 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 like what He communicates with the Father. So He comes, He takes the mind of his, the Father, and He communicates it to us, and then He takes our thoughts and He helps us communicate it to the Father. So. It is the spirit that is a joining between the human flesh, the human spirit, and God's spirit. We cannot live this life of consistency in Christ without the Holy Spirit. Without the Holy Spirit. There are times when you feel weak on your own as a human being. You want to please God, but you, you just find it difficult to do that. It is only by the enabling of the Holy Spirit. I have seen it for myself that even no matter how strong you try to think that you are, if the Spirit of God does not enable you, you will certainly have limitations by yourself. The Bible says that if the Spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells in you, which is the Holy Spirit, He will quicken your mortal bodies. How does He quicken your mortal bodies? By that same Spirit. It is the Spirit of God that quickens your spirit, that quickens your body, that quickens your mind to live a life of faithfulness to Christ. It is the Spirit of God that quickens you to live a life of devotion to God. You see that in one of these gifts it says, we find ourselves involved in loyal commitments. God is looking for people that will be committed to the cause of the kingdom, not needing to force our way through life, but living a life that is filled with excitement but with peace a mixture of excitement and peace is stability a mixture of excitement and peace is is beyond measure is not is beyond just you know uh, existing it is striving through life victorious christian living you know i am i am of a thought or i'm of, of a, the opinion that if you must live a christian life you have to live it victoriously you can't be a Christian and live just like everyone else. You can't be a Christian and live a dormant Christian life. You can't be a Christian and just allow life flow through. No, you have to you have to live through life with excitement and the peace of God. The peace the Bible describes as the peace that passes all understanding. The peace that passes all understanding. You know. So it is the Spirit of God that enables you. If you haven't had contact with the Spirit, of, with the Holy Spirit, this is not just a, a, a message. This is an admonition to yearn for that communication with the Holy Spirit. It will take your Christian life beyond just a race to thriving, to flight. 
you will soar like the eagle. So there's a difference between running the Christian race and soaring in the Christian race. Running the Christian race is just like driving on the road. You have to pedal. You have to, you have to, you know, throttle. There are so many things you have to do to a car to keep it moving, except for the automatic cars. But you still have to move the mechanical, the joints, the tires have to keep moving. But with the flight, the moment the flight takes off into the air, if you watch sometimes, the pilots have little to do. They have just have to keep steering it. Sometimes they can even leave the controls and the flight is on auto, autopilot, you know. But they are flying on the, on, the, on the force of the wind, on the force of the sky. The same way the eagle does. The eagle doesn't need to wave, it, wave its wing all the time. It can soar with the wind, soar in the direction of the wind and it just keeps maintaining that height. That is what the Holy Spirit does for you. The Holy Spirit enables you to fly. The Holy Spirit enables you to thrive. The Holy Spirit enables you to soar in your Christian race, to soar in your work with God, to soar in your relationship with the Father. The Holy Spirit enables you to live triumphantly. That is the invitation. That is the invitation I have come with today. You cannot do it on your own. It's not just an advice. It is the truth. You cannot do it on your own. You need the Holy Spirit in your life. You need to yearn for the Spirit of God. And how do you do you have communication? You have to desire it. You have to yearn for it. You have to yearn for it. The first point of having a Spirit-filled life is to desire a Spirit-filled life. Is to first desire a Spirit-filled life. When you desire a Spirit-filled life, you begin to pray for it. You begin to invite the Holy Spirit into your life. You wake up in the morning and you say, Good morning, Holy Spirit. I invite you into my life. I invite you into my day. Just the same way you invite Christ into your life, you invite the Holy Spirit into your life. You are, it's in you. You need an overflow. You invite Him into your life. It is when you, you don't stop. You don't stop until you begin to see the evidence. The evidence which some people, you know, have, which is the speaking in tongues, is just one of them. But these fruits that are listed here is the full manifestation of the presence of the Holy Spirit in your life. These fruits, which are, you know, the affection for others, exuberance about life, serenity, willingness to stick with things, a sense of compassion in the heart, conviction about holiness, you know, loyalty and commitment, and, you know, the ability to not depend on your energy, not to also direct your energy unwisely, you know. So he doesn't only help you thrive in your Christian life. He even helps you to channel your Christian faith in the right direction. He helps you to channel your Christian faith and your energy in the right direction. So you're not wasting time by following the Holy Spirit. Sometimes we are, we, there are some things that we get to and we're like, oh no, this one I can do it on my own. It's a walk away. Uh, this one I can handle on my own. No, you need to depend on God for it. You need to depend on the Holy Spirit for it. You need to depend on the Father for the ability to thrive. You need to trust God every step of the way. At any point, you de begin to depend on your own strength. At any point, you begin to depend on your own ability. You are losing sight of the Spirit of God. You are losing sight of a Spirit-filled life. A Spirit-filled life depends on the ability of God. Thrives on the ability of the Father. Thrives on the ability of God to, to help him or her. But a, 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 the other way around is trying to do it by your strength, trying to do it by your power, trying to do it by your ability. God wants you to come into the fold where you live a stress-free life. It is not a life that is without you know, effect. No, it is a life that is channeling its energy and its effect in the right direction, in the right direction. And I want you to join me to pray this evening. Can you begin to pray and begin to ask the Holy Spirit to in, to come into your life? Begin to ask the Holy Spirit to to come in and help you. Begin to invite the Holy Spirit into your life. Begin to invite the Holy Spirit into your life. 
begin to say holy spirit i invite you i desire you but you can even begin to pray if you know how to pray in tongues pray in tongues holy spirit enable me holy spirit i invite you holy spirit come and strengthen me come and quicken my mortal body come and quicken me every step of the way Legata in Draki Yaradasa, Zede Dinke in Tolobondia, Zake in Torica Lebenia, Ledo Porota, Zekande Ibadananta, Lino Cotomanege Yegedemana Yagada, Manco Lupre in the Sante Nahonia in the Sutia, Ledo Mainga Taninka Liberia Tegeta, Nina Nana Yagade Nien de Bonosia, Mankele Momomomomomomos, Lenda. Dada ye kande de de in drakata, male bragonia tegedenia, zende in the libra colos in tahenda, le mama ye kanda lagaya, rete de de ye ketemande gede ye gede. Holy Spirit, help me to bear the fruit. Holy Spirit, help me to bear the fruit. Let it be seen in my life. Let it be seen in my life. Let it be seen in my life. In the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, help me to bear the fruit. Let affection show in my life. Let affection show in my life. Holy Spirit, give me the fruit. Give me affection for others. Give me exuberance about life. Give me serenity. Holy Spirit, help me to deal develop a willingness to stick with things, a sense of compassion in the heart, a conviction about holiness. Holy Spirit, help me to find loyalty, to find the ability to stay loyal, to be loyal to the kingdom, to be loyal to the work of the kingdom, to be loyal and committed to things, to be able to direct my energy wisely. In the name of Jesus, I ask for your enabling, I ask for your strength, I ask for your ability in the name of Jesus. Kateke to manege de barada yagada, masha teke ipa no paika, zete teke, manteka na 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 yagada, kai kate manda da ipa na da, le brado koma ndele bosa, zeke pa ma na 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 kai, manda ta ta ipa ta, le pa ma ko si ta ya ta, manda ta ipa ta ta ya, ma ma na ta ta. Ah, glory to Jesus. Continue to invite him into your life. Continue to invite him into your life and trust that the Holy Spirit will enable you. I believe that as you continue to pray this prayer, the Holy Spirit will not only strengthen you, you will find the ability out of out of the, your spirit man to live a victorious Christian life. I am trusting the Holy Ghost that as you continue to embrace him in this year 2020, your life will not remain the same. It's a year of obedience and in this year, in 
the ability to obey is not by your power it's by the grace of god and i trust that your life will not remain the same in jesus mighty name god bless you for tuning in god bless you for being with us this evening and i trust that i'll see you strong i'll see you excited i'll see you exuberant next week bouncing in your faith and bouncing in a relationship with the holy spirit that is thriving god bless you in jesus name